करंट एंड वोल्टेज बिफोर स्टार्टिंग द लेक्चर क्लिक ऑन द सब्सक्राइब बटन एंड गेट एक्सेस टू आर हंड्रेड ऑफ कंसेप्चुअल लेक्चर फॉर फ्री फर्स्टली लेट मी टीच यू द बेसिक फिलोसफी ऑफ करंट लेट कंसिडर टू पॉइंट पी एंड क्यू लेट दियर आर फाइव इलेक्ट्रॉन्स प्रेजेंट एट पॉइंट पी these electrons are charges are attracted are stationary at point p i do some sort of work on these charges and they move to point q here again they stop so at point q these charges are also at rest from this example we learn that charges may remain at rest or may remain in motion now listen carefully when charges flow or move it is known as a current let me repeat it when charges flow or move it is known as a current we know that charges are at rest at point p so there is no current charges are also at rest at point q so there is also no current but when charges flow or move from point p to point q there is current from this example we learn two fundamental concepts firstly no current is produced when charges are at rest secondly current is only produced if charges flow therefore remember that when charges flow or move it is called current Now what is coulomb well we know that the s a unit of mass is kg similarly the s a unit of charges is coulomb it is represented by capital c let consider a plate or bucket of bananas if i said that there is 1 dozen bananas you understand it that there are 12 bananas in this plate it is because we know that 1 dozen is equal to 12 items now if i say that i have 1 coulomb electrons in this plate do you understand it i hope you can well 1 coulomb electrons is equal to 6.2 and to 10 raised to the power 18 electrons So in one dozen bananas there are twelve bananas, while in one coulomb electrons there are six point two four and to ten raised to the power eighteen electrons. Thus remember that we measure charges in coulombs. Now what is current? Well, consider two wires. Let I select point X on this wire and point Y on this wire. I am interested that how many charges passes through point X in one second, and how many charges pass through point Y in one second. Let I observe that five coulomb charges passes through point X in one second, and I observe that three coulombs charges pass through point Y in one second. So the current in this wire is five amps or five amperes because five coulombs charges pass through this wire in one second. Secondly, the current in this wire is three amps or three amperes because three coulombs charges pass through this wire in one second. As we know that coulomb is the s a unit of charges and second is the s a unit of time. Similarly ampere is the s a unit of current and it is represented by capital A therefore we define current as the amount of charges flowing through a wire in 1 second let me repeat it the amount of charges flowing through a wire in 1 second so the formula of current is i is equal to q upon t where i is the current Q are the charges in coulombs and T is the time in second. Now what is voltage? Well, let consider that a ball is present at a certain height above the ground and another ball is present on the ground. We know that this ball possesses high potential energy and this ball possesses low potential energy. 
or we can also say that this is high potential region and this is low potential region. Let consider that the potential energy of this ball is 10 joules and the potential energy of this ball is 0 joule. So there is potential difference between these two regions. Let me repeat it. There is potential difference between these two regions. Now if I release this ball, where it will go? Well, it is obvious that it will move from high potential region to low potential region. Here is a very important point which you must listen 100 times. When this ball falls down, it possesses kinetic energy due to its motion and we can utilize its kinetic energy. Let me repeat it. When this ball falls down, it possesses kinetic energy due to its motion and we can utilize its kinetic energy. Now consider two points are regions. P and Q. Let there are five charges at point P and there are two charges at point Q. Let the charges at point P possesses high potential energy and charges at point Q possesses low potential energy. So point P is high potential region and point Q is low potential region. As we learn that ball moves from high potential region to low potential region. Similarly, charges also flow from high potential region to low potential region. Let the potential energy of the charges at point P is 10 joules and the potential energy of charges at point Q is 3 joules. The potential energy difference between these two regions is 7 joules. In case of balls, the difference in potential energy is termed as gravitational potential energy because the balls are present in the gravitational field. While in the case of charges, the potential energy is termed as electric potential energy because the charges are present in electric field. So this 7 joules potential energy difference is termed as electric potential difference. Now listen carefully. This 7 joules electric potential difference between these two regions is called voltage. Therefore, we define voltage as the difference in electric potential energy per unit of charges between two points. Let me repeat it. The difference in electric potential energy per unit of charges between two points. Now listen carefully. As we learn that when this ball falls down, we can utilize its kinetic energy. Similarly, as the charges flow, we can also utilize its kinetic energy. So we can utilize 7 joules energy of the charges to do some sort of work. For example, consider that a bulb is connected to a battery. Usually we see that 1.5 volt is written on it. It means that the electric potential difference between positive and negative end of the battery is 1.5 joules. When we provide a conducting path like wires to electrons, they will flow from high potential region to low potential region. When electrons flow, we know that it is also called current. Secondly, there is electric potential difference of 1.5 joules. So these moving electrons possesses 1.5 joules energy. The bulb will convert this 1.5 joules of energy to light energy. Also remember that when this battery is dead, there will be no electric potential difference and no charges will flow. No flow of charges mean that no current. Thus we also learn that there is direct relationship between current and voltage. If we increase the amount of voltage, the amount of current is also increased and vice versa. This was all about current and voltage.